Okay, now, Carrie, go. Unleash okay. your wrath upon the world. Uh, yeah. Let's well hey, let's start with this okay. tweet. We'll start with I think a beetle. Yeah. Not a beetle. What beetle what's the son. son of a beetle called? It's a small Let's just bug, start with it. Some larva. A <laughs> no, that's that sounds rude. We'll start with this. So tweet. this is um I wanted to start with this because I've been watching if you guys haven't been following Sean Lennon and you're on Twitter, you should follow him. It's been interesting to watch his evolution. He's definitely a person, I would say, who is awakening. He's not woke. He's awake. He is evolving and growing as he learns new information. And I think he's really wise. And we've talked a lot about how intelligence doesn't dictate a person's susceptibility to propaganda and bad ideology. It's that's why you know some people who are very intelligent who's bought, who have bought into the narrative. Um, but I think wisdom is a different thing than intelligence, and I think he seems very wise. So let's read this tweet. He says, it is no longer exaggeration to say that the collusion between social media and media to manipulate our reality for the benefit of their political agendas has reached Stalinist proportions. In fact, Stalin's propaganda machine was relatively weak by comparison. Imagine if he had control of social media technology. How would things have turned out then? What would our understanding of that history be today? It's scary to think about. Yeah, and and he's I, right. I, he's right. He's right. And you know, he's not a tribalist. He's not some MAGA red hat wearing. You know, you can't easily write him off if you want to, because he's on the left. And I know they want to, and they'll still try and find a way. But. He's not a tribalist. He's not a partisan. He's a person who is awake and who's paying attention. And we've been documenting on this show, on an unsafe space for a couple of years now, we were doing updates on a purge is what we called it for a while, our series where we would sort of update on the media manipulation, the propaganda, the censorship from big social. And so those of you who've been with us for a little while, or those of you who just follow this yourself, you're aware that this has been going on since 2016, since before 2016, but they really ramped it up when Trump won. And yep. this week, I think they crossed a new line. I think they moved. I think they progressed a little bit further. I think, they, in terms I think they're, of, yeah, they're continuing yeah. to get bolder. Can, can bold. we just, be, before we even mentioned, I know where you're, I mean, we all know where you're going with yeah. this, the next story. Uh, but uh, I want to, I want to throw something out because I, I watched a, this is related. I watched a documentary yesterday, two days ago, called The Social Dilemma on Netflix. Oh, I want to see and, this. I've heard about it. Uh, I just I want to just throw it out there because, um, first of all, the caveat is it is made by people who are politically on the left. And so they assume that many of the problems with social media are that they're not doing enough to censor or they're not controlling, quote, fake news enough. And they still believe the Russian narrative. So there's a lot of bad politics in it and they talk about pizzagate and russia and as these as if as if these are the big problems with social media however um i do believe that the people who made this documentary care very much about children and are rightly concerned about the impact of social media on kids and us and have many many valid points and um i i realized I, the reason i want to quickly mention this because it's a sean's sean's tweet is making me think of this Stalin's propaganda machine was was limited by of the by the technology at the time. And the the propaganda we have today or the ability to to distribute propaganda and control the narrative is it's not even a, I wouldn't call it a difference in scale. I would call it a difference in kind. It is a different kind of thing. And I realized watching the social dilemma that because of my background in Silicon Valley, I actually knew the stuff that they were talking about. I was like, yeah, of course, that's how you design software. Yes, I know that that's how it works. But it dawned on me that, and I didn't know some of the stats that they brought out about how it was affecting kids. But it dawned on me that actually, there's no reason for normal people to understand that this is what goes on. And so if you're not, and I know a lot of people have canceled Netflix and not everyone's going to watch. So I just want to, at a high level, explain to you, this is not hyperbole. This is not... Uh, this is not an exaggeration of what happens. 
there has been a, in Silicon Valley for at least a decade, if not longer, I don't remember when this term started getting thrown around, is the term growth hacker. Uh, you would hire growth hackers at your company. Um, in fact, the term growth hacker is kind of cliche and has fallen out of favor now. It's so old in Silicon Valley, but I still, I think people, you know, outside of Silicon Valley still wouldn't have, wouldn't be familiar with that term. And the idea is to use knowledge of psychology and human psychology specifically to manipulate behavior so, so that um, you behave in ways that uh, help the platform make money. And typically that's to engage with the platform, share with your friends, do that kind of thing. And because we have machine learning, because computing power has increased so vastly, this is not something as simple as, well, you were shopping for furniture, so we're going to show you more furniture ads. We have, our technology is to the point where for every person, and, and this isn't this isn't exaggeration. I mean, they, they do some exaggerating like illustrations in this documentary because it, it's like a drama documentary, but this isn't an exaggeration. They have, they have a virtual you on the back end. They have a virtual Kerry Smith. And they have machine learning algorithms that track how long does Carrie dwell on this particular image before continuing to swipe. Um, how like what, how long does she take to pick up her phone? When does she move this? When does she do that? When does she click on this? What does she hover over? Like they pay attention to literally everything, and they can predict very well what most people will do. And they use there's a book called um, this wasn't mentioned in the movie, but there's a book that's been floating around Silicon Valley for years. And in fact, it's probably old now and outdated, but it was called Hooked by Near AL, if you're interested in learning how a lot of software is developed, uh, the user interface, they are very aware of the um, the dopamine rush you get in anticipation of a reward. Dopamine actually doesn't happen when you click, it's the anticipatory um, drug that happens. And they understand how to manipulate that. They understand that constant reward is not as good as random reward with random values. And they understand the, the ranges of that randomness. Uh, they, they really understand how to, in real time, not only serve ads, but serve content that gets you to respond in the way they want, which is typically engage in, you know, more clicks and more activity, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. You are being manipulated constantly. And the thing, the thing that I took away they, from this, so, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say along those lines in terms of knowing how to hook you and knowing how you interact that the algorithm is being programmed to such a degree that they know what is going to keep you coming back. They will do, I re, I can't remember where I read this, but they'll do things like they know that people get a dopamine rush when, when others like their picture. Right? right. So if you change your profile picture, they won't let it, it won't show up in ev all of your friends feeds at the same time. They stagger it. Right. They stagger it so you get likes throughout the day oh, and the and, next day. And they so, might serve you notifications yeah. of those likes depending on what your activity level is at the moment to get you to re-engage yes. if you have like it is it is a very it's very targeted to the sense where like they may know you better just by just by having machine learning algorithm watch your behavior. They may be able to anticipate your moves much better than a close friend or or even loved one could. It's sometimes better than you can. So they know you very, very, very well. And, and the analogy that someone used or the, the description that I really liked in this, one of the guys mentioned was in the past, technology was a tool and tools sit there until you pick them up to use them, right? If you're not going to get in a car, it sits there in your driveway and then you get in your car and go somewhere or, you know, um, a bicycle or a dictionary or whatever it is. A tool is sits there until you pick it up. Modern technology if you have apps on your phone or notifications enabled and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't. it's not a tool that sits there waiting for you to use it. It's a tool that uses you. It's not a tool, actually. It's a manipulation device that sits around and follows you around. You take it around with you and prompts you to interact with it constantly. And just so people know, I don't, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I don't have Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram on my phone at all. I have to use some of them for work, so they're on my computer. But I have notifications turned off for basically everything except for people who are like I need to talk to. Someone's going to text me or whatever. Um, I don't miss it at all. But this guy used this analogy. He said, I turn off. And, and by the oh, this is another uh, open secret. 
most technologists in Silicon Valley that are plugged into this, they don't let their kids do any of this crap. It's everyone else. Everyone else's kids are on Facebook and all this because, stuff. Because the people designing because the technology. Because they're terrified of it. Yeah, no, no yeah, one the people does. designing it. Right. Think no, it's no sick. one. A lot of the people who designed it, I've read interviews, but I haven't seen the social dilemma yet. I do want to see it, but I've read interviews with people who've designed the algorithms and they've, they've, they don't use social media themselves anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, this movie's populated with people who were, were some of the main designers for some of this stuff. And I think rightly, a lot of them were like, we didn't realize we, we the like button we thought would just be like, a positive thing in the world that people know like they didn't realize sometime but once it once it was realized it became exploited and now now a lot of things are done intentionally but um this guy said well i don't have notifications turned on on my phone for the same reason that i don't walk around with cookies in my pocket and for someone like me i've got a sweet tooth and <laughs> if i have cookies stashed in the house or chocolate or sugary drinks I'm very likely to consume them. It's not that I can't stop myself, but it takes a lot of willpower. And your willpower is like a muscle. Yes, you can build it up, but it also gets fatigued at the end of the day. This is known. So one of the ways you exercise your willpower to not eat sweets all day if you've got a sweet tooth or to not drink if you uh, have a problem with drinking or whatever is you don't have it in the house. You don't. And an alcoholic doesn't stock a full bar in their house and just say, well, I'll have it for guests here just in case, but I won't touch it. Like, no, they're smart enough to be like, uh-uh, right? I don't have tubs of ice cream in my freezer because I will eat them. So th I exercise my free will at the grocery store. And then I've set up my life in a way where I'm less tempted to just, I'm not going to run out to the store at 2 a.m. to get ice cream. It's not in the freezer. Ergo, I don't have ice cream. So, um, but when you have notifications turned on, when you have this stuff turned on, it is, it is, it's like having cookies in your pocket or pick whatever your other addiction is. It's like having it there all the time and you constantly have to look at it. And so the reason I want to bring all this up is this – I know people have mentioned uh, Carter eats cookie dough from the fridge. Shut up, Mandy. How do you know? Uh, <laughs> I would. If there were cookie dough in the fridge, I would totally eat cookie dough in the fridge. Yeah. People are already talking about China's social credit system. Like all this, there, there is going to be a push – with COVID and um, and frankly, some quote, quote, by safety people at these companies, there's going to be a push to use your phone for regular interactions, getting into a restaurant, getting into a facility to prove your X, Y, and Z. There's a push to do all this. They are implementing a social credit system. And the best thing that you can possibly do, the only way to, to thwart their manipulation of you is to not be using the platform. I'm not saying to say totally off it. Like I have a Twitter account. It's just, I don't have notifications. It's not on my phone. Yeah. When I want to tweet something, I'm at my desk at work and I want to tweet something or whatever. That's it. Um, and I might use it to look for news and we've talked about tweets. We just looked at a tweet. That's fine. But um, I just urge people to be aware of it because it's part of this giant, I'm going to use the word conspiracy, but I don't think it's a smoke filled room, but it's this giant effort to control the narrative of politics, which is finally we can get back to this. I just I wanted to throw that out there, Carrie, because it, it OK, this is one Let's part of a huge thing. I get it. Let's get to the fire of it. And okay. you're making me uncomfortable because Sorry. I am a social media addict and we you and I have different I have my own limits and rules like I don't have notifications pop up uh, for Facebook. Yeah. And but I do have it on my phone, and I do I know I spend too much time on it, and we all have our own kind of, uh, I guess, hopefully everyone has their own sort of limitations on how much they let it interfere. You know, I don't when I go out, I'm not I, I can't stand people that are when you're having dinner with someone and they're on their phone their whole time, and they're in virtual space with other people while you're trying sitting right in front of them. Yeah, <laughs> like look that and, kind and of interference. You and know, I'm not, look, if you're an adult like you, Carrie, I'm not trying to tell you how to do it. I'm just giving you some advice right. about how, how it works. It's I know. specifically important if you're the parent, though, of a kid. And if and they talk about some of these stats. Teenage and preteen girls, suicide rates are skyrocketing. Um, Self-harm is skyrocketing. There's a lot of really, really dangerous, dangerous things that are happening, um, especially with young kids. So, or, you know, teenagers. Yeah. So just be aware of that. And I do recommend watching it. Mm -hmm.